Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Seven Minutes in Evan Christmas special. Thank you for being here. We are going to sing our own rendition of Silent Night. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever else you fuck faces want to celebrate. Ho, ho, ho. Fucked up and we had no leadership inside Not sleeping peacefully ever again Cause Omicron is not killing anyone But we're treating it like the plague Merry Christmas! Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you Improv! All improv. Did I plan any of that? No. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Christmas episode, okay? For too long, people don't celebrate the holidays. And you know what? It's important. It's important to celebrate the holidays and all the great things that happen. That was way too loud. Way too loud. But the holidays give you a time to reflect. To enjoy the year that has come, giggity. And the year moving forward, giggity. What? Keep up. I think the holidays are great, you know, for a couple reasons. Something as I get older, a ripe old man now. You start appreciating the holidays in a sense of putting a nice bow tie on the year. It breaks up the monotony Cause the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Bam, 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 and you're stressed out with bills. That's just what happens in life. That's what you realize. All right. And I'm not pessimistic. I love my life. I love all the opportunities I have and, you know, getting to level up like fucking Mario eating mushrooms. All right. Hey, do you think that's symbolism for whoever invented the Mario games that Mario takes mushrooms and in his life grows? Like when people take mushrooms, they see fucking Jesus and whoever else is up there. I don't know. Just a thought. Put that in your corn cob pipe and smoke it. All right. Hey, end of the year, we're still having strokes and saying words wrong. But I enjoy breaking up the holidays and the understanding. Um, you got to look at life, especially me being someone who's always doing way too much and stressed and overwhelmed and drained and mentally exhausted when you look at everything as different levels different areas you compartmentalize is your friend fam yep you compartmentalize different parts of the year and i just mean this you know <clears throat> from a stance of someone who self-employed and does their own thing if no one is there to govern you you just keep going and going and going and never rest and never do things. And I feel like it's important to govern yourself and having a little breakup like the, the holidays. It's nice because it lets you reset. You go, okay, let's enjoy this time. Let's settle down because there's not a lot of businesses that I work with doing work and settle down. Enjoy it. Look at it as like, all right, we're going to pump our brakes. Are we doing that at all? No, but we're trying to, and we're talking about it, all right? And that's what's important. So take this time. Don't be stressed out. People get stressed during the holidays. It's easy to get stressed. And one thing I noticed, this is one thing that I do give this generation credit, is that they're getting past the whole dealing with the relatives thing. Not getting past it, because I think everybody still has to deal with it. But you're acknowledging that these fuck faces aren't, you know, always the best people to be around, you know? That's one thing that was pretty freeing in my life. I don't really talk about drama too much when it comes to my personal life. 
But everybody has issues. Every family has issues. And there used to be this idea that you can't not interact with family. That you can't, you know, get away from like, hey, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Hey, you know who the fuck said that? The toxic family members that are like, no, you have to deal with me. I'm right in your face, motherfucker. You know, those are the people that are the ones preaching that. Because you know what my stance is? Hey, if someone doesn't want to be around me, don't be around me. Go live your best life. That's something that I realize is that life is so short. It's so short and you only get one go with this, brother. Best that I know. Best that I know, you get one go. So I would never want to try to stop someone from living their most fulfilled life. I don't want to live rent-free in someone else's mind. I don't want someone to be out there worried about me and if I'm impeding on them or anything like that. I just, dude, don't worry about it. Just go live your life. If, you, if, there you don't, if you're not your best person around me, don't be around me. All right? I understand that completely. But it's the toxic people that are always just like, blah, blah, blah. They want something from you. They want to guilt you. They want to pressure you. They want to try to hinder you and make you second guess. Everybody deals with that. I feel like it's a rite of passage and also uh, a crossroads. Because it's like, are you going to be one of those people that just level up past it? Or are you going to get sucked into that world? And that's something I actually learned from sitting in the sauna with older people. I know I talk about talking to old people and sitting in saunas a lot. But I've had some of my best revelations in saunas. Sometimes not even the wisdom that people are giving me. It's the uh, the story, uh, what is it, when uh, they're a story of something you don't want to be, the cautionary tale. I've seen people in their 60s so consumed with their, their just, you know, family drama or anything immediate that they never got out of it. They never poked their head above the water to look around and go, what is the bigger picture here? And it's sad. So it always told me like, hey, don't get too wrapped up in this shit. Just keep focused on you and moving forward and becoming the best person that you can be. That's my life goals. Okay. I just want to keep moving forward. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because in the holidays, man, everybody's got to deal with stuff. I have friends reach out that they're, they're dreading talking to these people or being around certain people. I'm like, you just got to be like a duck, baby. Water off your back. My whole goal is to get to the point where people's intentions can't affect me. If someone's trying to throw me off the game, if they're trying to make me feel guilty, if they're trying to steal happiness from me, I don't want to remove people from being around me so they don't have the opportunity to steal anything from me. I want to remove the ability of them having any effect on me. That's what it is. Because there's always going to be people trying to steal your happiness, steal that thunder, baby, you know? And one of the good things that I try to work on is eliminating that. Look at it the same thing. When I Was I planning on talking about COVID? No. But so much of COVID, and it's, it's all coming to fruition. I'm not a wizard, okay? I don't predict the future. But it kept seeming like, this is not going to go away. And we haven't focused on making people healthier, making them stronger, diet, exercise, all of that. It's always just been, you just got to get vaccinated. You just got to do this. Blah, 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 the Omicron. All this stuff. I was always being like, well, isn't there just going to be another one coming down the pipe? If it's not this, it's going to be something else. And shouldn't we work on the base, our foundation to be able to handle these things? rather than trying to constantly avoid them and living life? Because that's what's happening all over right now. There are people who aren't living life in the sense of feeling the liberty of going places, feeling free. They're burdened with fear and stressed out anxiety because of a governing body that puts fear in them. And I just mean governing in the sense of the media, businesses, individuals looking to capitalize. 
I'm not necessarily just talking about the government because it almost seems like there's so many people wrapped up in their own fear that they're trying to get other people to be afraid. It's the weirdest shit ever. And the way that I approach COVID and everything like that is the same approach to life and dealing with toxic family members and people in general. I keep talking about family members. I don't really have that much of that in my life. I, I'm pretty good at just completely extinguishing anything that, you know, is going to like, I don't, I don't intertwine with things that are going to hold me back, but it's the same approach as like, if something comes along, I want to be able to handle it rather than always trying to avoid it. Because that gives you like an anxiety of always being in fear, waiting for the thing around the corner that can hurt you rather than I'm like, let me just metaphorically create an armor that can handle this stuff. You know, uh, I learned that early on when I started like posting on social media and started getting more followers and then started dealing with comments from people I didn't know. And then also dealing with haters which used to be a real thing, but you're kind of seeing through haters that they're just trolls and it's sad. But dealing with the trolls and the haters and all of that stuff, haters sound so early 2000s. What kind of haters make me famous? So stupid. But I realized like, oh, I have to be able to handle this because it would annoy me when I put out music or something and someone was like, this is complete shit and blah, 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 hurt my feelings. Your boy would get his feelings hurt. So then I had to learn how to completely disassociate with people's opinions online where now I post a fucking Chris, a bit about Turkey. Uh, I used to always go through and just delete really bad comments. If it's racist, hateful, not healthy, I'll delete it. But if it's just something like about me, I'll either find a joke in it or uh, I'll just leave it. I think someone got super upset about the Thanksgiving bit that I put out on Instagram. Super, super upset about it. Uh, commenting, DMing me, just weird shit. But it doesn't affect me at all because I've built, and from just experience of doing it over and over again, I don't really care. I don't care. I've disassociated from it. Same way if someone just came up to me and started saying crazy shit. If there's no reason for us to interact, I'm not going to care. I'm going to walk away. I don't give a shit that, you know, like you can't be at the whim of ready to, to fight everyone, to always be ready. It's like, no, just don't, don't be fragile. That's what it comes down to in that particular setting. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Christmas episode. Are we going to hit copyright issues? Probably. What the fuck was that? All right. These are supposed to be copyright free sound bar boards, sound bars. Okay. That's something we haven't brought back. Ladies and gentlemen, bars. All right, we've moved on. We're back on bars, ladies and gentlemen. Christmas, though. Let's talk about the reason for the season. Christmas. Okay, baby Jesus. People forget this was about baby Jesus. Your boy likes going down rabbit holes. And I'll go down a rabbit hole of how Christmas really started. Uh, St. Nicholas, everything. St. Nick used to be a real person, used to go around, uh, what was it, Gaelic? I don't know, Gaelic giggity. Uh, but I remember watching like a four-hour YouTube documentary. Was it all real? I don't know. But one Christmas, I was like, let me get into this. I need to find out what this Christmas, this Santa fuck face is all about. There's a real history of it, old St. Nick. Um, but it blows my mind, and this is why mass psychosis is a real thing because if you just see people doing things for a long time and it's part of the culture, you just go along with it. But if you look at Christmas, we're just like, Hey, Hey, yeah, you just had uh, kids. Well, here's one thing we're going to do. We're going to lie to them. Okay. I know we tell them not to lie. And I know, you know, that we shouldn't make up stories but we're going to make up the ultimate story to them that a senior citizen with reindeer that can't fly are going to fly. And he is going to be an E break and enter your home and put gifts for them. And he knows if they've been a good boy or a bad girl or a bad day, them. All right. Or a good day, them, or just a good, anything, a good person. Can we go with that? Unless they're a furry. 
then it's a good whatever that is. All right. Like we're giving kids trust issues when it comes to Santa, because there's nothing like that moment you start putting it together that Santa's not real. Because I remember one night, I remember questioning. Well, one night it was like, how did it happen? One night it was almost midnight and I was laying there and I had my, my peepers on the sky. I could see out my room. And I remember looking, it was a starry night. And I remember thinking, this motherfucker, what if he forgets? No one has 100% efficiency. What if this man just forgets to come to my house? How does he know? You're telling me this dude has never mixed up a gift. I'm not going to get some fucking gift meant for a little girl in China. How do we know this? He's never messed up once. I mean, he did mess up when he didn't bring me a dog. When I wrote him a letter, I wanted a dog. Oh, it's kind of odd. You know, brought me a, a stuffed dog. Kind of a dick move, Santa. Kind of a dick move. Okay. But I remember laying there and being like, it just doesn't seem possible. This dude knows to come to my house. So I got a little worried. I must have been like seven, eight years old. I don't know how old I was, to be honest with you. And I remember being like, shit. Well, let me just stay up for a while because maybe if I see him in the neighborhood flying, I'll be able to, you know, at least wave him down and be like, hey, Santa, you piece of shit for that stuffed dog. But don't forget this house. So I stayed up real late, real late. And I remember staying up till it was light out. And I was like, I didn't hear shit last night. I go downstairs. There's nothing. There's no gifts yet. And I'm like, dude, it's Christmas morning. What the fuck happened? And Santa hadn't came. And I went back upstairs. And I go in my bed. And then I hear a rustle coming from the hallway. I look out. And my mom is, is at the stairs. And I go, what do you think you're doing? Now I'm paraphrasing. But in my mind, I went, what the fuck is going on right now? And she goes, go back to bed, you piece of shit. Paraphrasing again. And they must have fell asleep. It must have been late. Who knows? And I remember going downstairs a little bit later. And the gifts were there. And then I had all these questions of what was really going on. All right. I saw behind the curtain. And I wasn't happy with what I found. I wasn't happy at all. And then I started questioning life. Are these really even my parents? Who am I? Is this stuffed dog an AI from the workshop? First of all, elves, we know nothing about them. First question, are they paying taxes? Okay. Is the workshop tax exempt? Who's paying health care for these elves? These illegal alien elves, if you ask me. Okay. Are they getting fair wages? We don't know anything about the infrastructure of Santa's workshop, okay? This is just real shit right now. I'm not even trying to be funny, okay? This is not a joke. Um, but it's nothing like when you start questioning because I start asking, is Santa real? And the answer was, if you don't believe he's real, then he's, you're not going to get presents. He's, then he's not real. I'm like, what the fuck kind of conundrum is this? Now I have to have faith in this motherfucker? Like he's my lord and savior of presence? And then a new story, conspiracy theory, started being thrown at me. That my parents were enlisted by Santa. Sometimes when Santa has a lot of kids, he enlists the parents to help with the gifts and putting them under the tree. Like he drops them off and he's like, you got it from here? And they're like, yeah, keep going. Which makes me wonder, Santa, why wasn't I good enough to have you drop the gifts off yourself? 
Hmm? Who's eating these cookies I was making? Because they were gone. They were gone. It's fucked up. But that's pretty much how I, I realized that Santa wasn't real. And it fucked me up for a lot of years. It fucked me up. It was a slow burn finding out. Like I wasn't just like, oh, my parents had to talk with me like Santa's not real. It was like I had to put it together. And then I was just a weathered old nine-year-old. And I was just like, fucking, he ain't out there. Like I, I, lowly, I slowly lost hope 1%, you know, as time went on. And you're probably like, Evan, everybody gets spoiled with Santa when they're a young kid at school. Your boy didn't go to school. All right. If you didn't know, now you know your boy was homeschooled. All right. I didn't have little kids giving me the facts. Okay. It took me a while. Am I ashamed of that? No. All right. It is what it is. I am who I am because I am who I am. All right. But you want to know something I did think was real? So my family does this thing every year. Uh, the elves come. Giggity. The elves come on Christmas Eve. And what do they bring? They drop uh, gifts in the in the grass. In the yard, the elves bring something. And they drop off uh, presents. And uh, the presents would just be little bags with your name on it. And they would have like pajamas in there. And it was a beautiful thing. Wonderful thing. And it used to be a big deal for like, you know, the younger family members, you know, you, you would make it a big deal for them. And there was a point where it was a big deal for me. Like I was the youngest family member. And uh, I remember one year we had everybody over and then you hear that jinga, 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 jinga outside. And I remember like older siblings and cousins and everything, like they would be part of the putting out the gifts. So we would go out there and there, I remember we were all by the window and I don't know who planned this. And to this day, I still don't know what happened. But I remember seeing, uh, I want to say it's my older brother out there chasing someone. And as they go around the house, I look and it looked like a fucking elf. And I don't know to this day who it was. I can't identify who it was, but they were in an elf suit. They had green spandex on. And to this day, no one admits who it was. I have this vivid picture in my head standing by the dining room table, looking out the window, being like, holy shit, that's an elf. I can picture it as clear as day. So elves might be real. The whole Santa thing is a joke, but the elf thing might be real. Um, that shit's wild, ladies and gentlemen. How exciting. How exciting during the holidays. My great, I, I don't have a Christmas tree this year. And I might have to recreate something that happened years ago. I've talked about this. There's a video about it. Um, you know what we're going to do? We're going to cut to that video. Okay. We're going to cut to that video. I was going to tell this story, but that's what we're going to end this podcast with is the story time of me stealing the Christmas tree. It's one of my favorite stories. It's one of the best times I've had uh, with my cousins and when we saved Christmas. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you on that. Enjoy this story time of when we saved Christmas. I hope you guys have a happy holiday. I hope you guys get everything you want. I hope Santa performs a B&E on your home. And remember, no matter what, I still love you. And I will tell you the Christmas story of when me and my cousin saved Christmas and we stole our family Christmas tree. P.S. I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, of course, the Puerto Rican side of the family. Nah, I did it with the whites. The date was December 24th, Christmas Eve, in the Lopez household. All was quiet throughout the house. You couldn't hear a sound, not even a mouse. That's not true, my family is very loud. And one thing that we lack, sometimes when you have a head of the household who's 100% Puerto Rican, 
Sometimes they just don't see the point of getting a Christmas tree. Now, if you don't know my father, he is a great man and a man willing to sacrifice anything for his family, except going through some bullshit holiday traditions of buying a Christmas tree. My dad is not really a, let me make you a hot cup of cocoa, son with two marshmallows kind of man. One thing my dad's never gonna call me a sport. He's gonna make the greatest rice and beans I've ever had in my life, but there's just some things that he just doesn't see the point in it. He has the kind of the tradition of, you've seen one tree, you've seen them all. You've had one Christmas tree, you've had all the Christmases. And you know, in the Puerto Rican calculations, that makes sense and also saves a lot of money. But here's what happens when you bring some whites into the picture. They love that holiday shit. They can't get enough. Uggs, little Christmas cheer. I'm half white, I can't live without it. You give me a little bit of holiday blend, <clears throat> just rub it on my tooth. And I, I love me some white holidays. Now that I've painted a base picture of my family landscape for you guys, whites, Puerto Ricans coming together for a traditional Hallmark American Christian holiday. We hosted a family Christmas event in our home without even getting a Christmas tree. I think my dad believed that the arroz con habichuelas was festive enough. And it made a lot of people sad. They were like, we're here celebrating Christmas. We don't even have a goddamn Christmas tree. And we were just looking at each other. We couldn't even, you know how many awkward family talks we had? There's no Christmas tree to look at and point at to get yourself out of shit. You can't be like, oh, look at that one. But my cousin Josh and Jake were heroes that Christmas Eve. Us three devised a plan to save Christmas for our families. We know that awkward family talk could have led to World War III. We devised a plan. We said, hey, there's no way we're going out like this on Christmas. Like, we gotta go find a Christmas tree. And my brother Sean, to save Christmas a few years back, climbed up in a pine tree, took an entire branch off. It was taller than a regular Christmas tree. We just stuck it in there. There were still bugs and shit. I think we killed like three birds from their nest falling out of it. We didn't give a shit, it was the holidays. But we couldn't do that this Christmas. We had to go out on an adventure similar to Samwise and Frodo and Smeagol. I won't say which cousin was Smeagol, but you know who you are. Us three left on a journey to find a Christmas tree. And listen, we went the traditional route. In our defense, we tried to spend money to buy a Christmas tree. We wanted to do it the right way. We drove all over town, but there was nothing. And then one of my cousins perks up and says, Home Depot sells Christmas trees as well. We pull into the parking lot and to just our luck, we see a gated off portion of the parking lot with a few Christmas trees in it. And it warmed our hearts like hot cocoa on a cold day that I've never tasted because my dad's Puerto Rican and we didn't drink cocoa, but we had pineapple vinegar. But I imagine that's what it felt like. So we three kings go into Home Depot. Christmas puns keep up. We're asking people, hey, is there any way we can buy one of the Christmas trees? I know it's, it looks closed down, but we're just trying to save Christmas. And people are like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know, let's go try, we can do this. So we go and talk to like this younger dude who's like, I don't know if he was a manager. And to give reference to the story, I'm probably like 16 or 17 around that age group. We go over to customer service and we're talking to the manager and us and just these, these cute, adorable kids. We're just trying to save Christmas for our family. I probably look like a who, my little nose all red and red cheeks, my little mittens. I didn't have mittens, we're Puerto Rican. We don't have mittens. The fuck is a mitten? We just had socks that we would stick our hands through. And we're explaining our story. We're trying to save Christmas for our family. This lack of Christmas tree at our Christmas party could tear this family apart, okay? We are coming apart at the seams right now. And this guy, he just looks at all of us, he goes, no. And we're just like, well, is there any way we could? No, I can't sell you those trees. It's a fire hazard. Something could happen. And it could all go wrong and it comes back on me. And I'm like, okay, relax, Boy Scout. Okay, you work at Home Depot. These aren't fucking the nuclear launch keys. Relax. You're selling a tree. It's just a tree. You didn't cut that thing down. You didn't feed and water it, acting like it's a pit bull with rabies. What do you think we're gonna do with it? But he had spoken. He wasn't having it. He told us no, and he started getting rude with us. And I remember I looked at him and I go, you know what, sir? Merry Christmas. But what I really was saying on the inside was, fuck you. You piece of shit. You're ruining Christmas. Goddamn Grinch ass motherfucker taking shit too serious at Home Depot. Listen, my cousins and I 
We come from the mean streets of Quartz Hill. My cousins are 52nd Street hooligans, you know? We're ready to die over a Christmas tree. We go park the car on the other side of the parking lot and we're just staring at the Christmas tree. And I remember we start devising a plan. We're coming up with it. We have blueprints of the parking lot and everything. We're going through the vents and everything. I don't know, someone had a map of California and we're just drawing on it and everything. I have black ops glasses on. I remember one cousin lit up a cigarette and we were just like, so we're gonna fucking do this shit, right? I'll light up a cigarette just to flick it. I don't even smoke, just let's fucking do it. We got this plan and now it's time to execute. Are we ready to go to jail? Yes. Do we want to? No. Do I have a Puerto Rican booty? Yes. Will I be the first boyfriend picked in jail? 100%. This plan has to work. I'm driving my parents' van right now. Jake is sitting shotgun, Josh is in the back, and we have the seats folded down because we're about to fuck shit up. So I race through the parking lot. I don't even know race there. I should have rolled up slowly, probably wouldn't have brought attention to us. Slam the brakes right next to the fence. Go, go, go! Josh jumps out the back, scales the fence. That thing was like 100 feet tall. He's just getting over it. Parachutes in, grabs a Christmas tree, hucks it over. Where Jake is waiting, Jake grabs the Christmas tree, starts shoving it into the car. It's not really going in good. Josh is hopping over the fence. We're trying to get it. We're trying to pull it in and everything. Out of nowhere, from the side of Home Depot, we see their security guard on a fucking golf cart. And he's just, there's like two of them in there. Oh shit, oh shit, fox in the hen house, fox in the hen house. We don't even get the Christmas tree all the way in. I'm just like, Josh, get in, get in, get in. So Josh jumps in and he's just holding the Christmas tree while just hanging out of the car. Jake gets in and we're rolling through this parking lot with a Christmas tree hanging out of the car and I'm blowing through parking lot stop signs. I don't give a shit. Parking lot stop signs aren't even real. I don't respect you. And it's like Fast and Furious AV. I'm just like going through, shooting at other cars. Cars are flipping, families are dying. Anyway, hot on our trail. We're probably, in reality, we're probably going like 30 miles an hour. We get to the edge of the parking lot. This is a giant parking lot plaza, by the way. There's about 40, 50 places in this place. So we're getting to the edge of the parking lot. The light turns yellow. And I'm just like, oh shit. The Christmas tree is still hanging out of the car. Josh is hanging out of the car. We're just holding onto it and the light turns red and the golf cart is right behind us. It was one of those clutch moments where I'm just like, you live or die by the sword. And I hit that bitch in the hyperspeed. We went through the red light, no one hit us, thank God. And I'm looking through the rear view mirror while we're going through it and everything and turning. The golf cart stopped, the chase was over. And here's what's kind of crazy to me. Why were they chasing us for taking a goddamn dry Christmas tree? I think they were just excited that something was happening, that there was a heist that they were now part of. I don't even know what they would have done if they caught us, because I would probably been like, yo, we need this Christmas tree. We'll give you 40 bucks right now for it. And they would have tried to take the money and I'd be like, entrapment, you're going to jail, buddy. We're now out of the Elephant Graveyard, AKA East Palmdale, shout out. We're home free. We pull off on the side of the road in the desert. We get the Christmas tree in correctly. So now we can buckle like regular civilians. We brought that Christmas tree home in just the nick of time. Everybody thought we were heroes. Christmas was saved. The family didn't break up yet. And to this day, I think about that night every single Christmas. It's one of my favorite Christmas stories. And when I have my own children, I shall make it a holiday tradition that I don't buy Christmas trees. My children must steal a Christmas tree every year. We're gonna go to Home Depot every Christmas Eve and we're gonna steal the driest Christmas tree they have and tell the manager Merry Christmas. I love you.